All right. Well, thank you for joining. My name is Mary Carolyn, and this is a presentation on one of my favorite fruits, the apple, because uh, mainly because you can take it anywhere and it's very durable and long lasting and very nutritious. And we also have many delicious varieties across the US and in Virginia. And we have just the right climate almost uh, on the border of the right climate to get a good apple crop. And of course, apples have their problems and any of us gardeners know that um, it's a work in progress, it certainly is for me. So uh, this presentation is about apple varieties and their attributes. First, I just wanna talk uh, briefly about the nationwide varieties. I'll give you a list, then I will show you a list of Virginia local varieties. And later in the presentation, I provide the resources I'll talk a little bit about apple nutrition and, um, and then talk more about growing apples, which will lead us into the plant clinic portion if people have questions and talk a little bit about apple uses. And um, none of the nutrition stuff I say is meant to be, of course, any nutrition advice in any way, shape or form. It's just what I've learned over time. So, it seems like we have had more and more apple varieties over time. I remember growing up, we always had Jonathan apples. Um, there are many wonderful apple varieties and they all have different flavors and attributes. It'd be really fun to get as many as you could and have an apple tasting sometime. But some of them hold their, their um, texture a little bit better than others. So it really is a personal preference. And uh, the Virginia Apple Growers Association and Virginia Tech are largely where I got my information and you'll see a credit source throughout my, uh, for all the photos I, I got along the way. Uh, but these are the Virginia varieties and um, Jonathan is a very sweet variety. I don't think, I personally don't see it that often in the stores. Um, Ginger Gold is another great seasonal um, apple. And Gala, um, Empire, some of these other ones um, hold their, Honeycrisp certainly is a nice firm apple and Granny Smith is also very tart and firm. And these attributes, their firmness and strength make them, some of them better for cooking and some of them better for snacking. It's all a very personal decision. And as I presented last week about local versus organic, my belief is that if you can, you should of course avoid pesticides at all costs, but if you can get local that where they have not used pesticides, that sometimes they, uh, a local grower cannot always afford the organic certification through the USDA. It's a very complex process. So that if, if you can get a grower or grow your own and not use pesticides, that's the absolute best because apples in transit lose their nutrition and also as they are sprayed with ripening agents now you're eating the ripening agent and if something has to ripen along the way then it's not at its full ripeness which means it's not at its full nutritional value or flavor well what is happening with my there it is okay so just talk a little bit about apple nutrition. I have a picture of apple juice with celery. If you can juice your own apples and you can get a whole bunch of apples, it takes a lot to make juice. It is worth it to have fresh apple juice out of a juicer. So what do apples do for us? And then after that, I'll talk a little bit about growing conditions. Um, their specialty, I believe, is heart health and regulating 
pH balance and regulating electrolyte balance. An apple generally is very low in calorie. It has a low glycemic index, even though it has a, a lot of natural sugar. But it's very well absorbed, and um, the sugar in an apple and in most fruits and vegetables does not produce the same sugar spike that candy does. You'll see here that Apples also contain a little bit of protein. They're, the carbs in an apple are complex carbohydrates. It's not like eating white bread. And of course they contain fiber and the skin is wonderful to eat. And then you're balancing that with what's on the skin. And so you wanna always wash your apples, of course, very thoroughly. You can use a citrus rinse or just water. So the apples contain their primary um, vitamins and minerals that an apple contains are vitamin C and potassium, and then it contains chemical compounds that I will explain on the next slide. So potassium is a mineral, it's an electrolyte, and a lot of times um, if, you, if you've ever had someone in the hospital and they're balancing their electrolytes and it's a fight between sodium and potassium and they're um, constantly having to balance that act. So sometimes a person will have too much water in their system and edema and then they have to flush the water out with diuretics and then now they, you know, now they go the other direction. So it's, um, our bodies have this pH balance and electrolyte balance that our body is working 24 seven for us to keep in check. Our only job is to make it easier for our body by eating the best food and um, you know, maintaining our health and exercise. Uh, otherwise our body's literally in you know, constant work mode day and night. So what does potassium do from an apple? It helps with muscle contraction pH balance. It can also mitigate bone loss um, because it counteracts the sodium. It balances sodium out. And if you're on a, if you happen to eat a lot of sodium from processed foods, then eating an apple can help balance that out. And that's also why it can help lower blood pressure. On the immune boost side, of course, we're in the middle of a pandemic. So getting as much vitamin C as you can from natural food sources is important because your body absorbs natural food better than supplements. So the vitamin C in apples help with cellular repair, cellular wall integrity, and just maintaining the fluid going in and out of the cell and um, protecting us from diseases. The fiber in an apple in the skin helps maintain the digestive tract and the uh, low glycemic index means you're getting a nice sweet snack but without the sugar spike. And uh, quercetin or quercetin um, is the chemical compound that um, helps maintain heart health. And the apple colors, I have bell peppers on this one. I couldn't find one on apples, but this is just an illustration to show that the color of a fruit or vegetable has a different chemistry and that's what pigments do. So if you're eating a blueberry, that's different than an apple, that's different than a green pepper. Uh, fruits and vegetables all give us um, a, a similar scale of just great things, you know, they have antioxidants and all kinds of vitamins and nutrients and um, chemical compounds. It's the different pigment colors that have that unique chemical structure and that's why eating a variety of colors makes good sense. So what about growing our own apples? And um, when we get to the open forum, I'll, I would love to hear more about how everyone 
uh, what experience you have in growing apples. So um, our apples at our house are um, not doing particularly well this year, but they did pretty well last year. So we had all these rains that interfered with, um, I guess it was really the 2018 rains that did a lot of damage, but the rain and then drought and, um, and then all these new insects. Um, we've had some problems with apples and with white oaks. And I've gone through the second white oak death. I have to call Mary Field again, pick the white oak, oak up. Um, but anyway, Virginia is on the southern fringe of the U.S. apple producing region. So most of the apple varieties um, do well if nighttime temperatures are cool at harvest time, which of course is right now. And um, if apples are grown in uh, under warmer conditions, they tend to be soft and less flavorful and just don't have a great texture or crisp crunch. So um, one problem with Virginia is the humidity and super warm summers that can leave our apple trees uh, vulnerable to diseases and insects. So elevations that are higher in the western part of the state are better for apple growth. So I just think of all the counties like Bentonville and Lumont and some of these other places that have higher elevations. Uh, Percival is another one where apples would probably do pretty well. Uh, and even, I, I read that even if you uh, elevate your apple trees up by say, you know, 10 feet, mine are kind of low in the yard. And, um, and that resulted in, I think the roots kind of drowning. But in any event, if you can grow your own apples or go to an apple orchard in Virginia, and there are many of them, if you Google Virginia growers, uh, Virginia apple growers, you will find a huge list of all the orchards that, and you probably already know of some and have visited some. But growing your own apples is probably better than um, buying them at the store if you can. So this is just a list of the Virginia apples and uh, their colors and um, you know some of the comments about them, their, their taste, whether you like tart apples. Some people really love Granny Smith apples and that's the only variety they like. And, and some people really like sweet apples like Macintosh or Jonathan, Gala, you know, Red Delicious is more of a neutral flavor, uh, a little bit of mix of both. So it's really a personal choice and um, fun to try out different apple varieties. So this is a picture of our apple trees. They're planted on the down slope of our yard. Um, we have four of them. One is kind of hard to see because he got a great big haircut last year. And I have pruned them back um, to get some of the um, disease off of them. This one in the front seems to have done the best. And um, they're all different varieties, all, there are only four of them. But um, I think that, I mean, they're a nice sunny area. They get sun most of the day. You can see the shadow of the house coming over them later in the day. But it could be that on this low slope, I made a mistake and they're getting too much water because this is the a lower part of the yard. So I might consider replanting them. I'm going to give them another haircut, but this time I am going to do that in February. As I learned in the Master Gardeners, I was pruning all at the wrong time. So luckily I took those classes. Um, as many of you know, as you're gardening to avoid 
frost during bloom time. Um, and some people cover a plant, but um, as I read in my research that covering apples does not uh, do that much good. So you can actually just end up losing the apples if we have the, the collision of your bloom coming out and then we get hit with a frost. As you see with you know any of our spring flowers and then we get clobbered with a snowstorm right as the uh, flowers start to bloom. So if you can plant them high up on a hill, then um, they would have least frost damage. So that's why I might try to move them as the cold air is heavier and then uh, sinks down to the bottom. So uh, planting them close to water can also reduce the likelihood of frost injury. And um, wind, windy conditions can also increase injury. So if they're, if you have a way to um, have some bordering around them at a distance, but just something to help block some of the wind, that's helpful. And water drainage is the most important consideration. So having the roots die from drowning is, um, is a big problem. And you can tell that by digging a hole that's two feet and seeing how fast that water drains out. So this is a apple tree care calendar that I adapted from Virginia Tech. And you can see um, if you already have existing trees or when you might order new trees, get that going in January, then doing your pruning in February, um, planting the new trees in March, and then throughout the year, hand pulling weeds. So they suggest applying um, whatever you might apply for weeds. And I just suggest trying to do that by hand and not use a pesticide. Um, they suggested cloth guards around the trunk and for um, something to try is also peppermint keeps mice away and mice are known to eat the bark of trees along with the deer. So if you had food grade peppermint oil or if you planted um, peppermint around that area, that could be a deterrent. It's something to try. It's something I'm going to try. Um, and then watering if it gets overly dry. And some of the varieties get harvested in July. If you wait too long, they'll drop to the ground. The deer will get them and also it can attract mice. So um, the, I think getting your trees up and running in a well-drained area on a hillside with not too much wind, with plenty of sun, and then pruning them in February to me is a good starting point. And of course, always a soil test. Um, since we're at that time of year where it's, we're carving things, you can also, um, think about what you might do with apples in, in the coming weeks. You can carve them just like a pumpkin and then they can dehydrate. I remember doing that in third grade. We made shrunken apples. Of course, we can make caramel apples, applesauce. And like I mentioned, if you can um, make your own apple juice, just buy a bunch of them if you have a juicer, clean them really well drop them in the juicer and maybe mix in uh, fennel or celery or really anything you want. And um, just plain apples are fantastic. Make a mix of different varieties. So if you wanna learn more about this, uh, Virginia Tech of course is a wonderful resource and um, Virginia Apple Growers Association I also use the USDA library and the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics for this information. And here are some other references um, that I have for looking more at quercetin and the chemical compo compounds in apples.
And so that is it. These two.